Hello everyone, here today with that great news that's come out. Harry Kane is staying at the club for at least another season. Um, announced himself, um, then backed up by the club. Um, it was great to see that he announced it first. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. And then we'll move on to some of the transfer links that have come up this week. So there we are. Welcome to the channel, guys. Speaking Spurs with me, Kieran, talking all things Tottenham Hotspur. Uh, if you haven't done so already, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. There's loads of you out there that are regular watchers that haven't subscribed. Doesn't cost you anything, doesn't affect you anyway. Just helps my channel grow and push it out further so more Spurs fans can get the information that we put their way and can share and talk in the comments with you guys. Um, like and comment if you do wish to. As you know, again, I do get back to you guys. Um, so we'll get into it. Harry Kane, we know he had three years left on his contract, which meant he was pretty much going to have to stay if we decided so. Um, Daniel Levy has continued to play hardball with Manchester City. Uh, reports are they actually did try and push a bigger bid over the line. Daniel Levy still said no. Um, there was talks that they were going to offer money plus Bernardo Silva, but Bernardo Silva wasn't interested in the move. Um, I don't know if we would have accepted it anyway. There were reports that we were thinking about it, but Bernardo Silva had no interest whatsoever, um, and I'm not surprised. But yeah, Kane, three years left on his contract. He's accepted the fact that Tottenham aren't going to do any business and he's going to have to stay. So he's come out. Um, been a big man about it. He's put a message out to the fans on Twitter, which said um, it was incredible to see the reception from the Spurs fans on Sunday and to read some of the messages of support I've had in the last few weeks. I will be staying at Tottenham for this summer and we will be 100% focused on helping the team achieve success, which is great. Um, obviously, he's been City's target all summer. Uh, he came off the bench in the last game against Wolves. Had a couple of nice moves. Uh, could have got a goal, but there was um, some good goalkeeping which prevented him from scoring that. Uh, hasn't really had much of a preseason anyway. But nonetheless, he's our man. Nuno um, hasn't really given us a proper indication of whether he's going to stay or not. Um, and then obviously this news is broke. And I'm happy because this whole scenario is finished. And I was talking to a couple of the guys on my football team tonight and they were saying that they've heard there are a lot of Spurs fans that just wanted him gone. And I think there's a misconception there. It was just the case of the Spurs fans wanted this uh, saga done. Not necessarily wanted Kane to go, but I think there was this growing feeling that he was going to try and push a move. I mean, I've said to everyone all along, I personally don't think he'll go because, yes, Daniel Levy is very much a money man, but he's not stupid in the sense that he'll just let Harry Kane go. It's worth taking the hit financially next season and maybe only getting... 80 million for him because it's a hundred percent profit and him in the team is more valuable than not. And also, you know, looking at the strikers around the world, we're going to find it hard to get a top, top draw striker in that we know is going to guarantee his goals just for the pure fact that we're in the Europa conference league. The last season we had is not good enough to attract the top dogs. So it makes way more sense to have Harry Kane around, try and get back into those champions league spots or at least a Europa league spot at the minimum but we need to be pushing for the whole season, keeping up with the top four race at least, and then maybe bring in a trophy. And we're more likely to do that with Harry Kane than without him and bring in a new striker that has got to either adapt to the Premier League or if they're already from the Premier League, adapt to the way we're playing, get into touch with, with the players that we've got within our squad. And that's always going to be a difficult job seeing as the season has already started now. So they're not even going to get a pre-season um, under Nuno's ideals. So it always made more sense to get him to stay. Kane's a professional um, in the sense that he will work hard regardless of who he's playing for, what scenario he's in. And at the end of the day, he's England captain, so he can't be dicking about throwing his toys out the pram throughout the season. And obviously, if he is going to look to go next season, he needs to prove that he's still worth it another season on. That's another year older, another year's football under the legs. So, you know, that that is what that is with Kane. Also, I want to put something else out there. There's lots of people that have kind of got a hate on for Harry Kane because he wanted to leave Tottenham. Now, there's a difference between wanting to leave Tottenham and wanting to come away from Tottenham to win trophies. Look, at the end of the day, Harry Kane didn't want to leave Tottenham Hotspur because he wanted to join another team. Harry Kane wanted to leave Tottenham to go and win silverware because 
our level of ambition wasn't meeting his. We'd gone through a rough patch. If, per se, Tottenham had have stayed within the top four, you know, we qualified for the Champions League football again, and we'd won a trophy last season, I can guarantee there would be, have been no links with him moving on whatsoever. The fact is, we haven't qualified for Champions League football. We didn't qualify for it the season before. So, you know, we're on an upward trajectory. And Harry Kane signed that long extension because we were building something good. We were progressing season on season. We were almost pushing for the title. We got to a Champions League final. Everything looked good. And then all of a sudden, start taking a downward turn. So for that reason and a career reason, I can understand why Harry Kane would want to leave. And I don't blame him. But if the club were to meet his ambitions, no chance would he have even considered, even considered, even considered trying to leave the club. But he's a Tottenham boy. His family are all Tottenham supporters. They've got season tickets, um, not just because he's there. They are Tottenham fans. So it already would have been a tough decision for him to even talk about leaving. He never officially handed in the transfer request. Um, so even though the Gary Neville interview people thought was a bit out of order, I understand the reasoning behind it. He wasn't disrespectful. He was just outlining his ambition. So, you know, that's the situation on that. So we'll talk about some transfer rumours that have gone on over the last um, couple of days, week or so, and just my views on them. Um, there's a couple of funny ones in there, as always. So we will talk about them. Um, Luis Diaz is someone we've been linked with. Uh, Chelsea are also linked with him. Um, apparently, we're both battling for the the signature of Porto's 30 million rated Colombia international striker. Um, he was joint top scorer in the Copa America during the summer. He does look good. Um, are we still going to be chasing him now? Kane is staying. I don't know. Uh, again, that's going to depend on price and uh, the sort of deal that we can structure. If it's going to be 30 million up front, I don't think it will happen. If they're willing to do a deal where it's part payments, it's a possibility. Adama Traore. Um, so we've been in talks over it. I don't think Wolves want him to leave. However, their manager said in his press conference when he was asked if Adama is staying, he he didn't say it was a definite. He said, I think he is. So, I mean, that tells you there's a possibility he could go, but the manager doesn't want to come out and obviously say that. Um, so Paratici uh, might not be in a position to sign a new striker uh, because of money at the moment. We're certainly looking. However, Adama Traore offers us a different dimension, as we saw when we played against Wolves. Although the end product's not quite there, there's no denying that he absolutely terrorised his defences. And he had sort of a free role against us. He was he was attacking uh, Tanganga at times, attacking Reguillon, trying to burst through the middle. He's strong. Um, gave Davinson Sanchez a, a hard couple of minutes at one point. Look, he's a good player. Nuno knows him well, knows how he can operate within the systems that he plays. Will it go over the line? I mean, I think Wolves know that we're going to try and slap in a bid of about 45 million. The question is, again, how are we going to structure that? So I think that one, again, is going to come down to financial structure because Wolves are then going to have to replace him. Another one, so Pape Saar. Apparently, we've agreed a deal to sign the midfielder from Mets for about uh, 14.6 million plus add-ons. Now, a lot of fans were a bit annoyed about this when it was announced. I mean, it's not been announced officially, but I think... Um, Romano put this this story out there and I've seen it reported on a couple of the other YouTube channels. I think we Are Tottenham TV have mentioned it. I'm, no doubt Matt Hayes has probably mentioned it as well, but I haven't seen anything of his in the last couple of days because I've been, I've been a busy boy. But a few fans have been annoyed for the sense that it's going to be a bit like the Jack Clark deal where we get the deal over the line, then he goes back out on loan. So essentially it's another player that, I mean, there's no point announcing because we can't get excited about it because he can't affect us this season. Um, but no doubt, very, very talented up-and-coming player. Very highly rated um, within the French League, certainly. However, we don't have the best track record with signing people from France, especially midfielders. Uh, they tend to come in and are a bit underwhelming. You know, just to mention like uh, Unkudu or Clinton and G. So there we go. Uh, the Hussam Awa links have not gone away. Apparently, we're still interested in signing the Lyon attacking midfielder. 
you know, again, it's a Paratici kind of uh, setup where he's just looking at all the options and then narrow it down to whatever's going to be the best, you know, in terms of how they'll fit in the system and financially and all that stuff, yada, yada. So expect that one to um, be one that we're linked with more and more until the end of the transfer window. Um, what else? Okay, uh, Frank Kessie. Uh, the AC La AC Milan midfielder, you know we've had we've had little links to him before, um, and apparently we're ready to offer a lucrative financial package to AC Milan when he becomes a free agent next summer. I mean, make of that what you will. Um, one of the funny ones. Okay, we'll just go for it. Cristiano Ronaldo. This one I can guarantee wouldn't have happened anyway. Um, there's obviously links because of who his agent is, same agent as Nuno's. Good links with Fabio Paratici and George Mendes. Um, so he's emerged as a potential player to come to us. That He's open to leaving Juventus this summer. Juventus don't want him to go. Um, apparently he's injured at the moment. But it's like, is it an arm injury or something like that? Um, I don't know what it actually is, but that's reports that I saw today. But these injuries tend to crop up during transfer windows when players are linked with going they tend to not play a couple of games they there are reports that they're injured um just to stop things from unsettling the squad i mean certainly with harry kane staying now i don't think it's going to happen because ronaldo always wants to be the main man but at the same time if you want to show ambition to harry kane that we really want to go for it obviously messi's gone to psg there are reports that Ronaldo could end up at Manchester City, but, you know, I just feel that's a bit disrespectful to Manchester United in the fact that, you know, he's an absolute hero there. He's a club legend. Bit of a kick in the teeth, especially when he's done interviews saying before that if he comes back to the Premier League, he'll only ever play for Manchester United. I think coming to Tottenham will annoy them less, but I still think they'll be annoyed because I think they'd love to have him back themselves. Um, we'll see how that one goes. Um one of our former players that we've been linked with a lot is uh, Noni Madueke. So we let him go to PSV Eindhoven. Talented youngster. Never quite got the chance. I think it was Pochettino that actually moved him on. He's been over there at PSV. He's done very well for himself. Um, I haven't reported anything on it before because it's a bit of a strange one. I don't expect it to happen just because he's a former player of ours. And, you know, you were kind of told by the club at the time you weren't good enough they allowed you to move on why would you then come back I know it's happened before with some of the youngsters but look, he's gone over there done really well um, we were quoted about 40 million to re-sign him and we let him go for absolute peanuts so uh, like he's two years ago he left us he's an England under 21 international at the moment um, yeah so he left us for nothing it was it wasn't even peanuts he left us for nothing Um but apparently he has signed a new contract today with PSV Eindhoven. So that one has slammed the door on that one for now, at least. Um, another one, um, Mariba. So he's a Barcelona teenager and apparently he's a bit unsettled at the moment. As are many of the academy players at Barcelona. They have been over the last few seasons. We've seen a lot of them move to the Premier League. Um, other teams in La Liga, Germany, Liga 1, um, over to Italy. They're sick and tired of waiting whilst Barcelona bring in these superstars, which has got them into the financial trouble anyway. There's plenty of the youngsters that could have come in, settled into the squad and done a job, but they've all decided they don't want to wait anymore. We also face competition from uh, RB Leipzig, Chelsea, Man City and Real Madrid. So I don't think uh, we'll be seeing him come through the door to us. Obviously, I mentioned the um, Bernardo Silva links um, with the possible exchange deal with Kane. Obviously, Kane's staying. Bernardo Silva didn't want to come. Um, Nahitan Nandez apparently we're closing in on a loan deal with a view um, to making it permanent for 22 million for the um, Cagliari in Uruguay international apparently we made a, an approach for the, the midfielder and he'd actually handed in a transfer request earlier this summer following interest from Inter Milan obviously we know Inter Milan were a little bit cash strapped not so much now with um, the sales of Lukaku and, and Hakimi. They're in a better financial position now. Um, so, you know, that's possible competition. Um, what else? Uh, just a couple that are resurfacing. Kurt Zuma, 
is another one that we're being linked with again. And I think that will be the case until he signs somewhere. Um, you know, West Ham very much want him. He wants to stay in London. He's very settled in London. Uh, I think wages are just going to be a problem with anyone that wants him at the moment. We spoke about Paul Torres a while ago. He obviously, apparently the offer that we actually had for him for 40 million was accepted um, by Villarreal, but he just rejected us outright. Um, Vlahovic, um, I, I don't see that happening at all now. Uh, players that are linked with an exit, obviously we know Harry Kane are no longer going anywhere this summer, at least. Tangi and Dombele. It, it's, it's annoying and it's sad. He's got so much talent. I've seen a lot of people talking and bad mouthing him because of the way he's handling things and look do you know what I kind of I kind of get it why he doesn't want to stay and more has come out in the last couple of days so uh, apparently he's still a bit sour about um the way he was treated under Ryan Mason he was kind of just exiled from the starting lineup altogether he also didn't play in the cup final and I think sometimes, and myself included, we've been getting annoyed at Undombele, but we forget that under Mourinho, in the end, he was one of our most important players and had a really good season. Mason takes over, boom, all of a sudden not playing. Now, apparently there's attitude issues behind him. Um, we don't know what goes on behind closed doors in that sense. But the fact that he was such an important player at times under Mourinho to then not really get game time at all, to not play in the cup final. It's a bit baffling. I don't really get what went on. Was, was Mason playing his mates? Cause Winks, he got a lot of game time and he wasn't great. He still hasn't been great. And even a bad and Dombele is better than the way Harry Winks has been playing recently. Anyway, Harry Winks is not the same player that we saw dominate Real Madrid in the champions league in those two legs. So you know, something's got to happen. It's going to be hard to move him on unless someone wants to pay money because we he's our club record signing for 65 million. Someone's going to have to cough up some money. Uh, Oliver Skip, apparently Newcastle are interested in signing him. If it's going to happen, it'll only be a loan. However, he started both the games so far, so I'm not sure it's going to happen unless we bring in another midfielder in um, because I can't see someone like Sissoko taking Skip's place. That makes no sense whatsoever. Uh, Davinson Sanchez... Um, apparently there's still discussions going on with Sevilla don't really know how true that is uh, it's just one that's happened Carter Vickers I, I f fully expect him to move on this summer where it will be I don't know he's obviously been linked with uh, Newcastle earlier in the window Celtic apparently is still interested in him the problem we're getting is them coughing up the money um, we, we know they already didn't want to pay money for Joe Hart which they did in the end uh, we got the 1 million out of them so they're probably still a bit sour about that, which is why they're dragging their heels over Carter Vickers, probably hoping it gets towards the end of the window and they can get him in earlier. Tanganga, I, I just can't see him going anywhere now. So the way it stands at the moment, confirmed signings, obviously we've got uh, Galini in on loan, uh, Brian Hill uh, from Sevilla, 21.6 million, uh, plus Eric Lamella, who has started off pretty well over there, by the way. He scored a couple of goals. Uh, playing really well, enjoying life. I thought he'd do well over there, and especially if he can stay fit. I wish him all the best. Uh, and then Christian Romero from Atalanta. It's an initial loan with an obligation to buy £42 million. And then our departures that we know of. Gazaniga, obviously, contract expired. Then he got snapped up by Fulham. Uh, Danny Rose went to Watford on a tree free transfer. Kaziah Sterling, um, contract expired. Juan Foyf, Villarreal, undisclosed fee. Eric Lamella, part of the swap deal. Um, Keon Atete Northampton on loan and Joe Hart Celtic undisclosed feed believed to be about a million and then obviously the contract news that we've had so far um, Sonny obviously signed until 2025 and um, Lloris says he's calm and relaxed um, despite no sign of new contract talks as he enters his 10th season at the club and he's now most capped player overtaking Darren Anderton. And I still find it strange to this day that Darren Anderton, considering the amount of football that he missed through injury, missed a sick note himself, managed to be such a capped player in the Premier League. Like it absolutely baffles me. The guy was always in the treatment room, but there you go. Like Hugo Lloris, like you can't deny the impact that he's had at the club. Um, obviously club captain now these days. Um, more vocal than ever, which is great. I think that's come with age and experience. 
Um, so yeah, we're in pretty good shape at the moment. I think someone like Kane is important for the season. I feel like we really do need to sign another striker though, just to mark down some intent to Kane, give him a bit of competition as well, and just show that we're really serious. Whether we get that player in now, I don't know. It's going to be difficult. Um, However, we we might be able to get someone a bit cheaper. I think um, there were still links with Martin Braithwaite um, from Barcelona. Like they still need to get players out the door, um, so they can get players in, sort out their wage bill. I think Umtiti, they're basically threatening unless he decides to take a transfer deal somewhere. They're just going to terminate his contract. Which yes, it will cost them a bit of money in the short term, but it's better than having to pay his wages for another season. So. Um, yeah, there's a possibility of Braithwaite, but I still don't see him as a, a great option. As a backup striker, maybe. But when we were linked with him to come in as our main man, if Kane went, absolutely not. So, um, yeah, that's it. That is it for the, the transfer links. Um, just a quick bit. Obviously, we've got our second leg against uh, Pacos de Ferreira, where we're losing 1-0 at the moment. Obviously, that's going to be played at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium tomorrow night. I fully expect us to win it. Nuno will obviously put out a stronger squad. Um, I don't think he'll go full out, though. I think we'll still see some maybe fringe players play in that game. But I do expect some first-team stars to start in that game to get us over the line. And then once we're in a comfortable position, we might see some of them come off and rest them up ready for the Premier League at the weekend. So thanks for sticking around, guys. I hope you enjoyed that one. Um, like, subscribe and comment. Stay safe. And as always, come on, you Spurs.